We've now got the ruling we've been waiting for, and more importantly, what happens next. So the quick background is that in the Colorado case seeking to disqualify Donald Trump from the primary ballot under the 14th Amendment, Judge Sarah Wallace found that he did indeed, quote, engage in an insurrection on January 6, 2021 through incitement, and that the First Amendment does not protect Trump's speech. But in the same ruling, she also found that the 14th Amendment's insurrection ban does not apply to presidents and therefore rejected the effort to remove Trump from the primary ballot in Colorado. Now, first of all, I don't want to understate the importance of a judge finding that Donald Trump did indeed incite an insurrection. This is a former president of the United States, the current leading candidate for the Republican Party, who is found to have committed an act so dangerous, so vile, so antithetical to the values of this country that it is quite literally one of the only prohibiting factors to becoming president laid out expressly in the U.S. Constitution. Donald Trump did that, and yet still he's the likely nominee in a party that calls itself the party of the Constitution. Yeah, no, that totally checks out. But as far as the second part of Judge Wallace's finding, that the insurrection ban does not apply to presidents, here's what Judge Wallace wrote. Quote, after considering the arguments on both sides, the court is persuaded that officers of the United States did not include the president of the United States. It appears to the court that for whatever reason, the drafters of Section 3 did not intend to include a person who had only taken the presidential oath. Now, I just want to approach this logically for a moment. The 14th Amendment was ratified after the Civil War expressly to prevent those who previously served from serving again if they aided the Confederacy in its effort to destroy the Union. Judge Wallace is suggesting here that the authors of this amendment went through all the trouble of prohibiting any elected official who'd engaged in insurrection from serving again, except the president? Except the one person who has the most power in this country? They wanted that person to be able to continue serving. They devoted an entire constitutional amendment to shoring up our democracy from its enemies, but built in a loophole so that one insurrectionist could still be president. Unless I'm missing something, that doesn't exactly pass the smell test. What I believe happened is that Judge Wallace knew as much, but that she didn't want to be the person to have the unilateral responsibility for keeping Donald Trump's name off the primary ballot. She herself made a statement just a couple months back voicing concerns for the, quote, safety for the parties, for the lawyers, and frankly, for myself and my staff, based on what we've seen in other cases. And so after seeing how judges and clerks and witnesses have become targets for Trump's rabid fan base, it wouldn't exactly surprise me if another judge, who by her own admission was worried about her safety, would look for an out. And so what we're left with was a finding that even though Trump was found to have engaged in insurrection, which alone should be disqualifying, that she parsed the language of the 14th Amendment to let him off on a technicality, under the assumption that the authors of the amendment somehow wanted an insurrectionist president to continue to have the right to serve. And by the way, while I admittedly am not a legal or constitutional scholar, voting rights attorney Mark Elias is, as is Congressman Jamie Raskin, and here's what both of them had to say about this issue. It doesn't make any sense from a legislative intent standpoint, as you point out, why would they pass this anti-rebellion and insurrection clause and somehow leave the president out? Like, why would that, how would that make, how would that make any common sense? But beyond that, to read it out, you have to say that the president is not an officer of the United States. I mean, the president is the commander in chief and the president is the chief officer of the United States. So I don't know how the judge got where they is they they did to say that somehow the, the being president is not an officer of the United States. You would have to believe that the framers of the 14th Amendment specifically banned people from becoming electors for president and vice president, that is being in the electoral college, but not banning the president himself or herself. Um, it just makes no sense. The president is the person who, as we saw on January 6, 2021, poses the most danger if he decides to overthrow the constitutional order and seize the presidency. So um, there's no textual exclusion for the president. The language is written in as comprehensive a way as possible. Now, at the top of this video, I mentioned what happens next. The ruling has been appealed by both the watchdog group that brought the suit, Crew, over the judge's refusal to disqualify Trump from the ballot, as well as Trump himself, who's appealing the ruling that he engaged in insurrection. So this issue will now go to the Colorado Supreme Court, but ultimately, it's expected to end up at the U.S. Supreme Court, considering there are also other cases in other states exploring this issue, and at the end of the day, we'll need a uniform ruling. Here again is Mark Elias exploring exactly that. The most important thing, more important than even how they come out, you know, and, and believe me, I have a point of view how they should come out on this, but even more important than how they come out on this is that they do it quickly, right? Because everybody is benefited 
from having this question resolved. So Colorado Supreme Court gets a shot. Hopefully they will rule quickly. And then whatever they do, one can expect it will go to the U.S. Supreme Court. And we would all urge the U.S. Supreme Court to resolve that question quickly. But here's what I want to leave you with. We cannot and should not be relying on the courts to save us from autocrats like Donald Trump and those who are following in his footsteps. This has to be an all-hands effort by all of us to stay informed, stay engaged, and be responsible that the people in our circles are as well. Yes, we say that every election is the most important election, but it is true every time and has never been truer than it is today, where the Republican nominee will very likely be someone whose most recent act in office was to anoint himself the winner of an election that he lost. Frankly, we did win this election. And who incited his followers to storm the Capitol in service of that plan. You'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. But remember, our democracy is not a guarantee, but being informed and involved is a small price to pay to be able to continue enjoying it. Before you go, to see more content from MSNBC, make sure to subscribe to this channel by clicking the link right here on this screen. You can also follow the link to see some exclusive content only on Instagram. And finally, to keep watching our videos here on YouTube, click where it says watch more.